welcome back to episode number three of Friday Night Funkin' Bot with Player. The Friday Night Funkin' Bot does not require you to go into the actual code of Friday Night Funkin' itself to make it work. It's because it's made with Python and all it does is it takes on-screen props. Three, two, so it actually one. sees the arrows going up and clicks it based on that. Now, this program is going to be very good at the moment, but it's going to be a Okay, it's mixed. So, in this episode, what we're going to do is the efficiency of the program. So, we're trying to make the program more efficient and look at how we measure how the program is. But another aim for this episode is going to be Senpai. Because we can actually use Senpai. Now, making it able to do Senpai should be fairly easy. The problem with Senpai is that the arrows are actually a different colour, as you'll see in a moment. And because it's done, and because it's done based on the colours, nothing. So those are going to be the two aims for this episode. Let's look at the efficiency one first, and then we'll get Senpai. So the first step is to make the program more efficient, but how can we make the program more efficient if we don't actually know how efficient this program is? So we're going to use the time module we've imported, and what we can do is at the start of the loop, we can set a variable, and that's just going to be equal to time.time. .time. Now time.time .time will give you a time in seconds doesn't actually mean anything, but it allows us to compute the difference in time if we take a second one. So at the end of the while true loop, we just add a little print. And there we take time to time again and subtract the one we took at the start. And based off this, we'll be able to see how efficient our program is. So let's get some first values. So if I'm just going to tutorial, and we just let Python run in the background, we can see just how long it Three, takes to do two, it. One, go. And I think a reasonable time to do a loop would be what, 100 milliseconds for this kind of rhythm game. Maybe that won't be enough for some of the right. faster songs, but hopefully. Left. And then if we take a look over at Python, uh, you can see it's still running. But we've got we've got kind of 100 milliseconds for a loop. That looks pretty decent. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but in that tutorial, the problem it looked like it was having is it was missing the right arrow, because the left one was pressed just fine. So I'll have to look into that. But I still want the program to be more efficient. So. Let's see what we can do to make it more efficient. So one thing I've been wanting to implement is this while true loop, what it does is every single loop, which is roughly 10 times per second, what it does is it checks if there is the arrow there. And if it is, it presses it. If not, it looks to try and release it. But we can actually avoid initializing all these pixel functions because if one of the arrows is not actually pressed that means there is no point checking if you need to release it so all we need to do for that is add a few true or false variables so up pressed equals false and then if the up key is pressed, we set it obviously to true, but if it's false, we don't actually need to do any of these elif checks. So I'll implement that. So as you can see here, I've added variables for if all of them are pressed. Then each time it is pressed, I set that to true, 
and only if the key is pressed do I check if I need to release it. So if we give this a quick run, you can immediately see that the program is, well, <laughs> twice as fast basically, if even a little bit more. We've got times of 50 milliseconds per loop. Of course this is going to be slower when it actually needs to check for uh, whether to release them, but that's still a worst case scenario. So a major improvement. But first we need to check whether it actually works. So here we are back at the tutorial. And the program is actually so fast it's pressing before. Huh. That's a problem that I didn't know I would have to face. Um, but if you saw there, the arrows were actually being pressed by the program before they hit the face. Simple solution, all I need to do is raise the bar where the program is checking for the arrows. But better than ever, as I want to demonstrate to you. While waiting for this to load, I'll talk Three, about two, Senpai. One, All we need to do for that is actually get the program is by no means perfect. Gone are the days of losing to dad battle. So the program is good. Now what we need to do is get it to be compatible with Senpai. Should be simple enough. All we need to do is instead of making checks for the one color, make checks for Three, both two, colors. One, go. Oh, no, we don't want to do all of those. So make checks for both colors, both the ordinary ones and the Senpai colors. So let's get collecting some data. So the changes have been made, I've added in Senpai's colour, also while I was at it I figured out what was causing it to not do double notes. Basically it did the first note and then it saw the second one and it thought it was wrong. So I added counter notes. as you can see, it's not really good, because it thinks it's always holding the down arrow. It presses the down arrow and the down arrow lights up the same colour as the arrow, and then it just holds it there. Um, and I don't really know a way to get around that. But that's not the only problem in general. Senpai is just... The program doesn't work well. Didn't see any of those. And I don't know why, because I've got the colours. When the program works, of course, everything else. Um... Is the issue with programming? It's, I guess you're troubleshooting. Three, two, one, go! 
we can see here. It is doing good guys. Okay, the last we got the next one on the ground. So the code for Sandfire Watch no issues. I look at students and have so much more room for the natural arrows. However, if we go look at the Sandfire Swords, we'll see that the arrows, the actual colour in the flavour is causing the program lots of issues in getting a good score on it. And there's nothing wrong with a code. The logic is sound, it's just a whole different art style. To be fair, the program's still doing decent in terms of speed. Yeah, if you look here, this is I changed it um, instead of doing a time, it does the, the average number of loops per second. Whoops, you can't see all that. So yeah, I changed it so it works at an average number of loops per second, and before it was kind of hovering around 18. Now it's only 15 with all the senpai stuff added. Um, but that's still decently fast. I mean, there's no really that requires you in Friday Night Funking to be faster than that, but yeah, the problem is, of course, in Senpai's that the area inside the arrows is much smaller, so the program just can't see it as well. Damn you, Senpai. But the program works well for all the others. I'll leave it here for this episode. The main goal has been achieved. Um, in the next episode, if I make one, I'll be making more improvements to efficiency and accuracy, obviously, to see if we can get the program to kind of full clear anything, except for the tutorial, because it usually has a lot of misses, even though it can do all of the songs except Senpai, uh, it can get to the end just with terrible accuracy. So like, comment and subscribe, and if I find anywhere to work on efficiency, I'll see you in the next episode.